Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a review on this standby battery backup aquarium air pump. It uses two D batteries. So this is what you got. It plugs in the wall and it has an on off switch. Open it up and you have two batteries. It will work with just one because you see how the batteries are both facing the same way. It's aligned in a parallel, so one will work, but two is more powerful. So you put that in there, you got the little motor that moves back and forth against the diaphragm, which pumps the air. This thing comes with a few feet, I think it's only two feet of airline, so you're most likely in an aquarium going to have to use your own. Right now I'm going to explain how this works. You have this power cord. You cannot use this as a regular pump, it's battery only. All this thing does is to detect if there's power in the wall. So I will do an example with how that works. But first, you see in the aquarium how there's only a few bubbles. The pump I'm using now is pretty weak. And I think the diaphragm might be wearing out, so it'll be time to replace a diaphragm in this soon. But I'm just going to disconnect this, and I'm going to hook up the battery backup pump to this. And I'm going to turn it on with the two batteries. It's much louder than the original right there. It gets kind of quiet when you close it. Now you see there's a lot of air being produced by this battery. You see it working in there? Now these are cheap batteries. I don't expect this to go more than a few hours, but if you're going to be expecting a big power outage, you should stock up on some good Duracell. So this shuts off, right? Now I want to explain this. See, you plug it in the wall. Now you turn it on, and it doesn't work because it's detecting there's power. You should have another one running along with this one in the aquarium. You should have a separate air stone. I don't have the air line for that right now. So you see, you unplug it, and it should start right up. pretty good. Now let me show you when you take one out. It's still working on one, but you see there's not as much power. I don't recommend running it on one because it's meant to run on two. hear that? So obviously, if you have deeper water, it's not going to last as long because it has to work harder. So I think this is a pretty good product, and I do recommend buying it. I bought this thing on eBay for about 14 bucks. They have a bunch of different variations. They have ones that have up to six batteries that are for like a super deep 55 or 100 gallon aquarium where you need the extra power. But I have another video if you're interested on things I do to keep the animals warm during power outages. I got at least 10 years out of this one, so it's expected that the diaphragm is going. Diaphragms are actually very difficult to get for these things. You have to actually have to special order them on eBay. Pet stores don't even sell them anymore because these days people are dumb. They don't know how to do maintenance on their own things. You open this thing up and you replace the diaphragm. Some people actually open these things up and they'll put like... <clears throat> Vaseline all around the diaphragm just to help it from drying up because when it starts cracking it starts leaking yeah this one is definitely not as powerful as the one I was just using you see it even takes a minute to pressurize like this time yeah you see <clears throat> took a while to pressurize the line well I'm usually not 
using the pump in the front of the aquarium, so the hose was actually crushed here. So, this is actually how many bubbles this thing puts out when the hose is going through the hole in the back. It's a little bit better than I just showed, but let's try this without it being crushed. That is just awesome what battery power can do. This is called an ultrasonic fogger. It adds fog and it's nice for the aquarium plants because they like that really high humidity. It's very nice. People use those things as humidifiers. It's safe for an aquarium. They do generate heat, so don't put it in a tiny aquarium or a fish bowl. That's the smallest one I could get. That's like 12 bucks. It puts off a lot. You can get ones that have six of the jets, but they're like a hundred bucks. In this aquarium, you see I have a filter there. It goes down this gutter, which is open so you can see from the other side. I have a waterfall in there, and it all comes here. That's all for circulation. There's my Placo right in there. Bunch of pothos plants, ultraviolet light. Up here I have two pet snails in there. Made the glass all dirty. Let's see them in there. There's one of them. There's one over there. I made a video of these snails a while back. One of these is the snail. The other one is a different snail because the guy who sold me them had to get me... He sold me two new ones. One of the new ones died. One of the old ones died from parasites. They had these flat worms. When they died, a worm came out of it that was almost an inch long. It was crawling around like a leech. I got rid of that, and these are kind of under quarantine. I'm figuring they might have that, but even if they do die, thankfully, before they... They did lay some eggs in here, and I took the eggs out of here, hoping the babies won't have any of those parasites. Put them in here. About a week later, they hatched. You see, there's two of them down there that I think died, but the rest of them crawled up, and we got some really small baby ones. I have not seen them eat yet, but there's like 20 of them that did survive. I'm hoping they start eating that lettuce. You see, they're really, really small, but big enough for they can't get out. Well, these eggs are very fragile, so I'm just going to move the ground away from them so that I can get a good scoop and transfer them. Digging around them. Hopefully I can scoop them up now without damaging them. There we go. There's one more still in the hole. So put these into this cage. In about one week they will hatch. There's, a, no, there's, a, there's actually two more. Two more eggs. I don't even like transferring the dirt into the... Okay, let's see. Go in there, do some misting, get them wet, and they'll start moving around. This is one of the adults. This is about full size. I gotta add some more lettuce. That's a bunch of lettuce there. These ones eat really fast. And you see, they also dig. That's what all this is over here. They dig trenches. And the water woke the babies up. See that one there starting to move around? so tiny now these guys their shell is almost see-through because they are babies I will be adding some calcium in here but not yet because they have not eaten yet because I, I don't even see them near that that's the only piece of food in there make sure there's none around the edge before I lock this down Okay, there's the other one right here. Yeah, snails are filthy creatures. They're okay to handle, but you should always wash your hands. The kind of parasites these had were flatworms. Those flatworms, people can get them, but in order to get them, you won't get them from handling them unless you eat them. That's usually how people get them. A little kid eats them. Looks like there's a little fruit fly in there because of the lettuce.
But um, the one that did have the parasite, you could actually see it moving around inside of the thing's eye stock. But these guys do a good job of burying the eggs. I know at least one of these does have parasites. That's why I'm keeping them like this kind of quarantined, I guess. I don't know which one it is. Oh, this one discovered the top is open. <laughs> 